three, two, one. We welcome you all at Nasra Public School Online Teaching System. This is Grade 5, Subject Science, Topic Magnetism, Week 3, Lesson 1, Part 2. Learning Outcomes By the end of this lesson, students would have to learn about the compass, observe magnetic field of the earth, Know about how to make a magnet. Experiment how to demagnetize a magnet. Learn about electromagnets. Compass and its structure. Compass consists of a small compass needle, which is actually a small bar magnet placed inside a metallic box with a glass top. Because of the magnetic field of the earth, the compass needle always points in the north-south direction, so it is used to find the direction. How does a compass always know the way north? Duck, are you sure we are on the right path? I am just following the map. Then where is the rest of our class? I think we are lost. Let's sit down for some time till we figure out what to do next. We are here! We are here! There you are. We thought you were lost. You are both way off course. How did you get here? I don't know, Professor. I was just following the map. Did you use your compass? No, I did not. I thought we would be able to find our way with the map. You should always use the compass whenever you trek or travel. The compass always points north and shows you the way. That way, you will never get lost. Professor, how does the compass always know the way north? Have you ever seen magnets? Yes, Professor. And I know that metals get attracted and stick to magnets. Yes, but did you know that magnets are also attracted to other magnets? The compass needle is also a magnet and it is attracted to a big magnet that is present around us. Big magnet around us? Where, Professor? I don't see any magnet around us. The earth is the big magnet. The two poles, north and south, on either ends of the earth are magnetic. Both the poles pull one end of the compass needle. This causes the compass needle to always point in one direction, the north. I will remember this and will always carry a compass with me so that I don't get lost again. Magnetic field of the earth The earth is like a huge bar magnet with a weak magnetic field around it. This is possible to find directions using compass. How to make a magnet? A magnetic object can be made into a magnet by stroking method or electrical method. In this slide, let's discuss about stroking method. Stroking method is also known as the touch method. In this method, a magnetic object is stroked many times in the same direction with a magnet. Now let's see what is 
द इलेक्ट्रिकल मैथड इन इलेक्ट्रिकल मैथड द पीस ऑफ स्टील बिकम्स मैग्नेटाइज वेन इट इज प्लेस्ड इन साइड द कॉइल ऑफ वायर विच हैज अ करंट फ्लोइंग थ्रू इट In this slide we will discuss about how to demagnetize or destroy a magnet. A magnet can be destroyed by hammering and heating a piece of magnetized iron or steel strongly in a flame will demagnetize it. Double touch method place a steel bar to be magnetized on two bar magnets as shown here now place opposite poles of two strong magnets at the middle of the steel bar as shown here move the magnets towards the opposite ends of the specimen keeping the magnets inclined on reaching the opposite ends lift the magnets and place them back to their respective original positions repeat the process The polarities developed at the ends are opposite to the polarity of the pole used for magnetization. Place some iron nails on the table. Now bring the steel bar near the iron nails. The steel bar attracts the nail showing that it has acquired magnetism. Introduction Magnetization is the process by which a magnetic substance attains magnetism temporarily or permanently. The methods used to magnetize a magnetic substance are single touch method, double touch method, electrical method of magnetization. Demagnetization is the process of removing the magnetic property of a magnet. The magnetism of a magnet can be totally or partially destroyed in the following ways: by rough handling, by heating, by induction, by passing electricity. Single touch method. Place a soft iron piece AB to be magnetized on a table. Take a bar magnet and place one of its poles on the soft iron piece as shown here. Stroke the soft iron piece with the bar magnet. When the magnet reaches B, lift it and place it back to the position A and repeat the process several times. The upper side of the soft iron gets magnetized. Now turn the soft iron bar as shown here and magnetize the lower side in the same manner. The point A will get the same polarity as the pole of the magnet touching it and the upper end of the bar will attain the polarity opposite to that of the magnetizing pole. Test for magnetism. Place some iron nails on the table. Now bring the soft iron piece near the iron nails. The soft iron piece attracts the nails showing that magnetism is induced in it. double touch method place a steel bar to be magnetized on two bar magnets as shown here now place opposite poles of two strong magnets at the middle of the steel bar as shown here move the magnets towards the opposite ends of the specimen keeping the magnets inclined on reaching the opposite ends Lift the magnets and place them back to their respective original positions. Repeat the process. The polarities developed at the ends are opposite to the polarity of the pole used for magnetization. Place some iron nails on the table. Now bring the steel bar near the iron nails. The steel bar attracts the nail showing that it has acquired magnetism. electrical method of magnetization the given bar that is to be magnetized is placed inside a long coil of insulated copper wire the copper wire is connected to a source of direct current as shown here 
When the circuit is closed, a strong direct current passes through the coil of the insulated copper wire and the bar becomes a magnet. The polarity of the rod depends upon the direction of the current. If the bar is viewed from one end and the current is found to be flowing in a clockwise direction, then that end will attain south polarity. If the current appears to be flowing in an anti-clockwise direction, then that end attains north polarity. If it is a steel bar, it becomes a permanent magnet. If the bar is a soft iron bar, then it becomes a strong bar magnet and is called an electromagnet. This electromagnet ceases to be a magnet as soon as the current is stopped. Methods of Demagnetization The magnetic property of a magnet can be totally or partially destroyed by rough handling, by heating, by induction or by passing electricity. Click on each method for more information. Hammering, dropping and rough handling of the magnet can demagnetize the magnet. A magnet loses its magnetism if it is heated above a certain temperature called its Curie point. The Curie point for iron is 770 degrees Celsius and that of steel is 880 degrees Celsius. The Curie point for nickel is 358 degrees Celsius and that for cobalt is 1121 degrees Celsius. If two magnets are placed side by side with similar poles together, each induces opposite polarity in the other. As a result, the magnets lose magnetism. To avoid this self-demagnetization, the magnets are placed in pairs, side by side with their unlike poles together, as shown here. By passing electricity, Place the given bar that has to be demagnetized inside a long coil of insulated copper wire in the east-west direction. Connect the copper wire to a source of alternating current as shown here. Switch on the circuit. Now slowly reduce the current to zero. The magnet loses its magnetism as alternating current changes direction continuously. This change in direction of current disturbs the alignment of molecular magnets, resulting in demagnetization. What are electromagnets? Electromagnets differ from normal magnets in one major way. They are made by passing an electric current through a wire that has been wrapped around iron. The current creates a magnetic field and magnetizes the iron core. When the current is turned off, the iron loses its magnetism. Electromagnet A soft iron bar is taken and several turns of an insulated copper wire are wound over it. On passing an electric current through the wire, we find that the iron bar becomes a magnet. Such a magnet is called an electromagnet. Observe that the iron fillings get attracted towards the electromagnet only when the current is flowing through the wire. That is, the iron bar remains a magnet so long as the current is flowing through it. On stopping the current, the bar loses its magnetism. An electromagnet is a temporary magnet. The magnetism produced in an electromagnet depends on the amount of current flowing through the wire 
and number of turns wound on the soft iron rod. After discussing about electromagnets, let's see their uses. Electromagnets are used in doorbell, telephone, motor and many other things. Now let's see how an electromagnet is used in electric bell. The electromagnet forms the core of electric bell. When the bell button is pressed, the circuit is closed and current flows. The electromagnet becomes magnetized, attracting the soft iron armature and the hammer strikes the gong. However, the circuit will break and the electromagnet loses its magnetism and the springy metal strip pull back the armature and the circuit is closed again. The process repeats. Most of us have seen it. You know, this bell also works on electromagnet. Confused? Let us first refresh our memories. We already know when the electric current passes through a wire, it behaves like a magnet. This is the magnetic effect of electric current. Also, a current carrying coil of an insulated wire wrapped around a piece of iron is called an electromagnet. The power of this electromagnet can be increased by increasing the number of turns of the coil. It can also be increased by increasing the flow of current through the coil. Let us also not forget, electromagnet can also be turned off by stopping the electric flow of current which made it a magnet. Now that we are clear about the electromagnet, let us now understand how an electromagnet is used in the functioning of an electric bell. Let us see the simplified circuit of an electric bell with the switch in off position. It consists of a coil of wire wound on an iron piece bent to form U-shape like a horseshoe magnet. A spring-loaded arm made of an iron strip is kept close to the electromagnet. This arm has a hammer attached to it at one end. Let us call it a clapper. A small gong or bell is also placed near the hammer. See, there is a contact screw near the clapper. Now, let us switch on the circuit and the fun begins. Right now, the clapper is in the contact with the screw. So, the circuit is complete and the current flows through the coil. Due to the current flow, the coil becomes an electromagnet. The electromagnet then pulls the clapper towards itself. In this process, the hammer at the end of the clapper strikes the gong of the bell to produce a sound. Let us see what else happened when the electromagnet pulled the clapper and we heard the hammer striking the gong. Look closely. Right now, the clapper is not in contact with the screw. The circuit is broken now. So what will happen next? The current through the coil will stop flowing. Will the coil remain an electromagnet? No, it wouldn't. The coil is no longer an electromagnet. As we know, it's the flow of the current that gives the coil its magnetic power. So, it no longer attracts the clapper. The clapper springs away from the bell back to its original position and touches the contact screw again. This completes the circuit. The current flows in the coil and the hammer strikes the gong again. 
this process is repeated again and again very quickly. Thus, the hammer strikes the gong every time the circuit is completed. This is how the bell rings. Interesting application of an electromagnet, isn't it? So, in a nutshell, by turning an electromagnet on and off, we made a useful thing, an electric bell. Using this electromagnet, we created the movement of the clapper to ring the bell. With the current flow, the electromagnet attracted the clapper, ringing the bell. But it also broke the circuit and stopped the current flow. Due to this, the electromagnet lost its magnetic power and the clapper went back to its original position, making the contact with the screw again. This made the circuit complete and again the clapper struck the gong. Great, isn't it? So the next time if you get any chance, do analyze the circuit of an electric How electromagnets are used in a telephone? There is an electromagnet in a telephone earpiece. As the current through it varies, the pull on a metal plate varies. This makes the plate vibrate and send sound waves into the air. The telephone now in use is similar to the device patented by Alexander Graham Bell. Though there have been many improvements, the basic principles are the same. In today's handset, there is a microphone in the mouthpiece and a small loudspeaker in the earpiece powered by an electrical circuit. When the vibrations of speech reach the diaphragm of the microphone, it vibrates in turn. The diaphragm then causes the electrical current running through the microphone to vary in proportion to the sound. The resulting signal travels over a network to the other phone. At the receiving end, the vibrations of speech are reproduced by another diaphragm. The electrical signal produced by the microphone causes an electromagnet's pull on a speaker diaphragm to vary with the same pattern, thus reproducing speech. The summary of our today's lecture. We have learnt about compass, magnetic field of the earth, how to make and demagnetize a magnet, what are electromagnets and its uses. I hope you understand the lesson very well. Thank you and best of luck for the next online class.